Hey guys, so today we are here with a new chapter of the how to series and in this chapter we're gonna see how to create uh, wood patterns for our wood materials. Now in here I brought you like two different ways of doing it that will give you a different desired result but it's gonna be uh, wood uh, texturing oriented. The first one is that the one we have on top, the one that's already screened that we are gonna get this here into a frame we're gonna do wood detail one or 12 one and I think this is the kind of wood uh, pattern we are most commonly used to like when we see it we say oh, yeah this is wood and the thing with this is that we can get used to it like we, c we can use it in maybe wood planks but we have to find a way of making it feel more natural as you see because this is like this is not stretched when you would look at our wood reference yes a wood plank reference these lines these curves these uh, knots they are more like stretched around it and they are not that big as we are seeing here and of course we can change that we can make them smaller bigger and so on we can add or remove more detail but it's gonna really depend in in how we change our parameters and what things are we able to add into what we do so in this case in particular the only thing i had to do was use a grid only in one yes uh, this one specifically to generate several lines with gradients in it after that we blur them so we have a, like a smoother transition later and i warp this by a purling noise yes and the reason why we are doing this in specific is because we want to generate these circle patterns when you see here this kind of knot so let's go over it a little bit with this linear gradient one what we are achieving is this detail our shapes have a gradient that goes from upwards to downwards from one to zero with the purling noise what we are doing is we are getting all our shapes in this map yes specifically with the purling noise and we are making the knots and, and warps around our shapes if you compare like let's say we compare yes this specific part in our warp node meaning after they all the information has been, has been mixed and processed and we compare to our parallel noise we will see that we have like a white area in this specific part where the knots are being created and that's because we have thus this white information this value here that is allowing us to warp this while this one it stays a little bit more in its place and we are adding a directional blur yes because it helps us give a little more detail the more we stretch it the more our detail will stretch you can go serious and crazy about it and you will find other kinds of wood pattern that are more like directionally as we were speaking before but again when I was trying this I didn't feel really convinced so I went for a new technique that I developed here that doesn't have the knots, yes, as I was not going to use them right now, we can make them by hand. So what I did in, in this one, but we are gonna call it wood detail 2, yes, is I made, like, instead of actually grabbing one gradient linear and making a lot of gradients and warp all together, I did, like, my three different costumes. Uh, gradients so I grab the first one and I tell it by the number I grab the second one Tyler for double the size or even bigger and finally the third one where I got even higher in value and all of these uh, gradients are being warped by a purling noise and they are being blend in together with a max so basically what we are achieving yes is like kind of a wave pattern yes we go from one to two to three and we have created several uh, lines yes let's say certain directions which have gradients in different values so instead of having these kind of you know uniform uh, gradients we have a more like 
less uniform or more crazy kind of gradients that have a different shape and after that I use this custom node uh, I haven't find out where I got it first so if someone knows then please leave it in the comments so others can download it please but we use the sine wave that allowed us to perform a sine operation on top of our value and it generates as you can see generates like more contrast in what we're doing we have darker values and whiter ones as well and then we go to the old bad school where we get our waves and we blur them we give them we give them direction we start breaking them and we use a gradient dynamic with a parallel noise to generate yes this uh, kind of circle like a uh, wavy yeah, yeah, the wave effect in our lines and make it less the contrast again and after that we went for an auto levels yes we are regaining the contrast so we can subtract it to our mesh and these two final steps are basically specific for this material uh, I got a field random to color so I can uh, so the pattern we are applying is not the same in each of our wood planks they are not continuous one with each other because they are not the same wood plank they are different so it would be it would have no sense if one wood plank had exactly the same pattern than the one on top and they continue together and finally this is a spe special part where what we do is we use a multi-directional warp grayscale i wanted to have a like rougher detail of wood in this one so i use a min mode where the edges of our shape like go inwards instead of outwards like if you change to max you're gonna see our shapes our white starts to increase if you change to min our white starts to decrease it starts to get inwards and i'm using a uh, directional noise one for this one yes this was exactly how i make this wood pattern now when we are talking about wood detailing it wouldn't have much sense if we don't have like this kind of directional noise on top so in order to get the best out of it what I did was a combination of notes and directional noise so we can go from sharper to stronger details in this case I use directional noise 1, one of the sharpest we have, and directional noise 4, one that is not that sharp. And we combine them. Now, you can use the mask, yes, of your liking, in order to choose where you want each of them. I didn't you know, do that in this case because I wanted to, I didn't want to go so much in specific with this, it was just general noise. And what I did later is I did a directional warp to make things a little bit sharper and noisier as you can see they are more like they has like more direction they feel like a small little needles of wood that are, are gonna be in top of our surface and if you just want to have some sharp detail then you just use directional noise one and you get this really nice detail for your wood now bear in mind two things of this two different techniques and the thing is that details are quite sharp and super strong and when i say super strong i mean really strong i'm used to work with a normal value of five points so in this case my value of subtraction on top of my wood planks for the wood pattern i created before is of 0 0.07 and after that what i'm doing i'm using a mean darken with a grayscale uniform value yes in order to flatten that this is something a little bit more specific of what I, I was trying to achieve but it's just head ups on to the wood detailing of this now this chapter wasn't that long but I hope that you got to learn how to make these two different kinds of wood patterns and that you are able to influence yourself with new techniques I'm gonna be releasing later a full tutorial on how I did this, why did I did this this way, and specifically on the base color of this material because I think it's the strongest point it has alongside the roughest map I created. So I hope you liked the video, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.